Jack White, Fear of the Dawn album review. Let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this new album from a childhood hero of mine, Detroit Rock Royalty, Mr. Jack White, one half of the legendary White Stripes. I cannot stress this enough. In high school, I wanted to be Jack White. And I mean, why not? I mean, from White Blood Cells to their final album, Icky Thump, uh, the White Stripes were on top of the world. Jack's playing, his eccentric performances, all of this led to some of the best rock music that I had around me growing up. It's honestly one of the main reasons I ever started listening to rock and any alternative to begin with. Uh, and outside of that, Jack's always been very busy between the dead weather and the rock and tours and his solo career, which... I'll be honest, I've had some very uh, strong opinions on. I mean, approaching his debut album, Blunderbuss, I didn't know what to expect going into it. And yes, you can argue that this is Jack White on cruise control. At times, it certainly is. But I still think it has a lot going for it. I mean, Love Interruption on its own is a fantastic tune. But he followed it up with Lazaretto, and it's, it's a tough one. There's some great moments, some quirky tracks, but there are so many albums, the majority of the album that is just so unmemorable and really, really tame. It ends up being really forgettable, and it's just an album that I've just never really cared for. And as of more recently, I've been genuinely more worried about Jack than anything. I have tried and tried so hard. Even in the last two months, I've listened to it again two times. Boarding House Reach is not that good. It is tough to get through. It is a trek. And yeah, there's, there's a track or two that I don't mind, but most of the album is Jack White doing his best Frank Zappa impression and just really missing the landing. It's not personally what I'm into from Jack, and the singles that he released up, coming up to this new album have run the gamut from unlistenable completely to actually pretty good so all bets were clearly off leading up to this new album but i will say this i think this is a much better album this time around this album starts off with taking me back and not for nothing this track rips this is much more along the lines of where i thought his last album would be sounding i love the electric bluesy riff if you're a fan of jack from any decade this will sound right at home to you as a matter of fact it's got a rawness and an explosiveness that i haven't heard from him in quite some time the production sounds really good too and something about the percussion the drums on this track just really gets me up and grooving oh all the while it really doesn't lose a lot of the eccentric edge that jack really found on his last album that's still here in spades this is just a lot of fun and really where i want to hear jack white right now i mean trust me this is still a very odd eccentric and experimental release from jack but one that's a lot more my speed i really like the white raven as well this is a little grittier it's a little darker a lot of this album is and the riff that we get here it's surprisingly intense. This is so much more in Jack's wheelhouse, I feel like, from his eccentric performance, just the off-the-rails and genuinely eccentric instrumental. This is a real knockout. Eosophobia also, I really love this. I love this slithering, very dangerous-sounding riff that just kind of, I don't know, it just comes off so sinister. It is genuinely out there. So is Jack's performance. Like, this is all I really wanted at the end of the day. A showcase of Jack's playing, as well as his odd side. I mean, that's literally all I can ask for these days, and I'm glad we're getting it here. I really do like What's the Trick, too. This is a sort of wild blues rocker and one of Jack's best performances here. This kind of sounds like, once again, where he should be right now. Especially as far as, like, a wordier performance goes from Jack. It's real stroke of genius for a few minutes and a track that I want to come back to a few times. Oh god, but there's still some tracks on here that really get ugly really, really fast. Like, the majority of the material on this album is very enjoyable. When this album gets bad, it gets borderline unlistenable. Into the Twilight, what even is this? Like, I feel like this track was thrown on this album with the sole purpose to piss me off. I like hearing Jack at his weirdest. Especially at his campiest. Give me more of that, Jack White. But these vocals on this track are borderline obnoxious. And the extended jams that we get on this track, some of the most unnecessary here. This track is just jarring all around, and Dusk is such a boring interlude that adds nothing to this track. 
absolutely nothing. And I don't even want to talk about Heidi Ho featuring Q-Tip of all people. This track has haunted me since its release. I almost didn't even listen to this album because of this track. It is the worst track here. Not only is it just really ugly, it's really disjointed. There's not a coherent thought in sight. And this is such a waste of Q-Tip. It's not like this weird, cool experiment. This is what the hell happened in the studio. And the rest of the album kind of teeters upon, you know, sort of average, even though I do think most of this album's pretty good. Fear of the Dawn has a title track. It's, it's okay. It's not the worst sin committed here. I mean, I do like that riff. That riff is pretty gnarly, and I do like the upbeat vibes here. But I'm not as wild about the production here. Jack's vocals also don't do it for me. Trust me, it's not terrible, though. If you like it, I get it. But on the other hand, that was then, and this is now, is honestly one of the zaniest tracks here. This reminds me of, like, Blunderbuss era Jack, but completely off the rails. You're getting the off-kilter riff. You're getting Jack at his quirkiest. You're getting some great production, too, and some blues elements as well. I'm all for this. I thought that he was going to really nail the end of the album, but then I hear the Eosophobia reprise. Good God, this was unnecessary. Why is this a thing? He took one of the most interesting and captivating tracks on this album and threw it all out the window. This is three minutes of studio trickery that nobody asked for. I mean, is it the worst thing here? No, but it's just not where I'm at with Jack White right now. Morning, Noon, and Night, though, is a pretty cool late album treat. It's genuinely off-kilter and seriously freakish at times. It's odd. But it also is really endearing and sweet at times, too. This is kind of like middle ground for Jack, but not in a bad way. It's an interesting track that actually it takes me back to some classic White Stripes in an odd way. And I really love it. And some of those riffs that we get here, they are nasty. And as far as a true blue Jack White blues jam goes, don't look any further than this album's finale, Shedding My Velvet. It's actually one of the best tracks here. It's a really nice surprise. It's just so emotional and broken down and not like anything else we get here. It's a great finale. Uh, this album actually exceeded my expectations. While it's not perfect, and trust me, when it gets bad, uh, it's downright unlistenable. But compared to where Jack was at a few years ago where I was genuinely worried about the guy, uh, this is actually a lot of fun at times. It's very quirky. It's very off the rails. It shows Jack being eccentric, but also reminding us what he could do best, and that's really rip on some electric blues riffs that are actually pretty exciting. Uh, honestly, I'm feeling better about him right now, and I'm genuinely interested on this new album he's got coming out in a few months. Uh, I'm interested to check it out eventually. I'm feeling okay about Jack right now, but as far as this album goes... It's not bad. I'm feeling a very light 7 on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.